today we're going to be creating an accurate watch movement inside of Cinema 4D with some light expression, espresso controls, uh, keeping it simple and quick. So what we're going to look at is the first example. You can see this is a accurate clock where we have a second hand, a minute hand, and an hour hand. And I've made this document 70,000 frames so we could actually see it move. But what if you want to make it start at a different time? Well, our rig allows us to do that. You can see I have an extra tab here called hour offset and it allows us to select a separate time for the hour hand and you could do this as well for a minute hand if you have a specific time that you want it to start at also we have some controls for the springiness of the mechanism with this accurate example you're not going to see too much but you can see that the second hand has a bit of a spring to it and it snaps it's actually just quantized this next example is a stopwatch so you can see it goes quicker and this one you'll see a better example of that springiness with the controls so we can add more spring to it and see this is the second hand and the minute hand we can give it more spring too with these amounts i find making them more subtle is better so something like two or one so you get a tighter spring before we get uh building this out i just want to bring up one feature that we're going to be discussing and that is the math equation and the mod is what's behind this and if you go to mathisfun.com forward slash numbers forward slash modulo you'll see how they've got actually an example of a clock here and so the way this works is when we write our mod equation you're going to type in mod then instead of putting this value right here we're going to put time in here and then this is the going to give us the remainder so this is what the cutoff is of the modulus so anything higher than this number it's going to loop back back to zero that in expressions you also have the ability to take and add a range mapper with the modulo checkbox which allows it to loop so you can see it's looping on 10 I could put this to 12 or whatever if it was a clock but in this case we're using 10 the time is plugged into here the range mapper which allows the modulo to take place and then I'm just rounding up the number so we don't have decimals so you can see the timer continues and it'll just keep going infinitely because the time feature is plugged in okay so let's dive in so here's our tick mark I'm going to add it to a cloner. So if I hold down Alt while the cube is selected and click the cloner, it will automatically nest it for us. I'm going to go to radial and we have 12 sections and I'll pick an even number of 150. So what we're going to use this for is validating that our equations are correct. When you bring this in, you can always delete these. These are just for reference. So this I'm going to put it to 12 and then I'm going to control drag or command drag and type in 60 here and we'll add 60. This is for the seconds and I'll also scale these down a little bit. So there we go. Next, we'll build out the hand. So I'm going to go here to the polygon tool and click the triangle feature and drag this up. And I've got snapping turned on to grid snap. So here's our triangle. That's going to be the second hand. Next, what we'll do is we need to get the anchor point in the center. So I'm going to expand it and drag while hold, clicking Y on the keyboard. That moves the anchor point. You can also add do it here. I'm going to drag it right into the center. Hit L again. And then I can test my rotate. You can see it's perfect. Man Z. The first step we need to do is we want this thing to spin. In order to do that, call this hand, second, add this to a cloner. So I'm going to do the same trick. Hold Alt, click on it, set it to linear, bring this down to one on the clones. And now we can apply effectors to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first group this, call this hand sec. With the cloner selected, I'm going to go here to the effector called plane effector by default with the plane effector selected we're going to go to the effector parameter and we're going to click on rotation and we're going to rotate this in the direction you can see we have to go to negative directions to go clockwise so i want this to spin all the way around so i'll type in negative 360 and now it's affecting it 100 percent in a 360 and next what we're going to do is we're going to use fields so we'll go to the field selection. We're gonna click here until we see the formula effector. Now, if I play this, the formula effector will go back and forth because a sine wave is applied. So let's go ahead and delete this and let's just put T and it's just doing time and this is the start of it. So in order to get this to loop and actually continue going, you can see that the formula effector does not loop. So instead of just putting time in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a modulo. So I'm going to type in mod, open bracket, close bracket, and then between the brackets, we're going to type in time. And then we're going to need to put a semicolon and this is going to be the loop number, which is going to be one from zero to one. And you can see it continues along. So every second, this 
this thing's looping. So after the time, we're gonna type in divided by 60, and this gives us a minute hand. Now, if we want a hour hand, we need to type in divided by 360, 3600, and this will give us an hour hand. So I'm gonna revert this back to seconds, a second hand stopwatch. Let's do a, let's do it divided by 60 so we get a, a second hand. And then the next feature is I want this to have a little bit of a snappingness to it, and that's where this quantize feature comes in. So if I quantize this to a num number of like 60, it moves and ticks every second. Now, if we're trying to mimic a high-end uh, watch like in these this example that I showed previously what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to a, a number divisible by 60 so I'm gonna put 240 or I can get even tighter movement for a high-end watch of 480 and you can see we get a smoothness to it but it still has a little bit of a snap so there we go next what I want to do is I want to smooth this out just a little bit so I'll add to it the delay effector and if I leave this default it's gonna smooth out the quantize feature to this really low like point one and now we have a little bit of a smoothing action but still get that snappiness and this mimics the watch that i showed the example of this watch in real life has a little bit of a tick to it but it's still smooth and so if you're doing this for a real product like i'm showing here like this tag watch uh, you're going to want to look at videos of that watch and see how the mechanism works now that we have this rig set what we can do is we can duplicate it i'm going to move it up drag a call this minute pull it down a little bit and enter in our new integer so in the formula effector I'm going to put 3600 and I'm also going to get rid of the quantize and delay feature. So if I play this forward, you can see when it gets to here, it gets to a minute. You can see this is working. Now it's playing back kind of funky because the second hand has the delay effector. When I scrub the timeline, it freaks it out a little bit. And so for the hour hand, let's do the next one, the hour hand. So hour, we'll drag this one down a little bit. With this one in the formula effector, we can take this same value and then just divide it by 60 and that'll give us an hour hand so we're taking the whole modulo and then dividing it by 60 and then if i change this to 80,000, so this is our hour hand so you can see if i move this you can see by the time this uh, minute hand comes across it's at the halfway point which would be a half hour perfectly so i'm going to take all of these features and throw them in a null call it time rig and let's go ahead and add some espresso so i like embedding the espresso on another null inside of the group so if i want to get fancy and hide it so if i hold shift root parent selected it adds it as a child and i'll call this espresso right click programming tags espresso you can't see it it's off the screen but i added the espresso tag it looks like that and we'll add the timer in here so the first feature I want to do is the hour offset so I'll go to the hour section bring up the espresso controls and I'm just gonna rotate the cloner here we'll call this hour and the one that we'll need to rotate is the heading but we need it to snap its specific values so let's go ahead and set that up this cloner needs to rotate on a specific degree we're gonna take 360 degrees and divide it by 60 and that's gonna give us six degrees so every six degrees is one fraction on that clock so I'm going to take my cloner here and I want to do the heading. So I'm going to drag the heading into this field here. What we need to add to our rig here is an espresso. So let's go in here and say manage user data, add a group. We'll call this control rig, clock rig, and we'll add a data. And this data is going to be our offset. We want a float slider because I like seeing the sliders and we need real numbers. We can put 60. That'll give us our offset. So I'll hit OK. We'll take our espresso rig you can see here's our new tab we'll drag it into the field here on the output of the time rig and we're going to need to bring in a couple nodes here so the first one we want to do is we want to take this value and multiply so a math node and i like exposing the thing that it's going to get connected to so i'm going to just put a constant and we know it's six degrees of rotation i'm going to type in six and it's a real number so we're going to take our offset put it into the first multiply it by six degrees of rotation and then what we need to do is we need to convert this value into 360 degrees because right now they're real numbers so to do that what we'll do is we're going to add a calculate range mapper plug the range mapper in and we know that the values we're getting are real numbers so we can leave it as user defined and we'll put 360 degrees but our output needs to be zero 
degrees through negative 360 degrees. So we're going to put degrees. So now you can see we've got degrees of rotation. And we just need to set this to negative because remember, we're going clockwise. Hit enter and plug this in. And there we go. So now we have a offset. You can see we can go right on those minute hands. So there's your offset. And you can see if I move the playhead, it's still moving. We're just offsetting the group. Okay, so the next thing I want to show is how to get in your Expresso the plane effectors formula field. Let's do the more difficult one. Let's do the second hand because it has the quantize feature and the delay feature. So you might think that you need to drag in the formula field or the plane field. It's a little tricky. What you do is you go and you select the plane effector and these subfields get brought in this way. So then we'll drag in the effect strength of the delay effector. And now you can see it allows us to access it. Next, what we'll do is we're going to just copy this slider so user interface copy user interface go to our espresso rig controller with the clock rig selected we are just going to say paste drag it in and then rename this smoothing and then this is for the second hand okay and then we can take our espresso rig drag this in here and then just link it up and that's how you set up the plane effectors and access these sections so if you want to add a controller that allows you to change the quantize steps so maybe you want a user to have less quantization you can do that as well. So let's test it out. So we'll go to our rig. We have no steps, no smoothing. You can see if I crank this up, it smooths it out. So I like setting it somewhere around 1 or 2%. Uh, if you want to save this now to use in other projects, you can see it's very simple. And you can just parent your clock hands to these and then turn off the visibility. This is ready to go. What we can do is we can go to our shelf here. And I called one Eric Tools. And then you can just take this and drag it in and then create an espresso rig. And that's how you can create something that's reusable and never have to make it again. And that's it. You survived. That is how we create a espresso time rig that we can adjust. So that just wraps it up. This is the espresso time rig to get smooth control and create accurate time in Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.